Hey everyone, this is Janine with Growth Virtual. I wanted to do a video today about the request form, what it is, how to set it up, how to use it within your business to bring in leads kind of 24 seven for you. Just kind of some of the main points for the work request form, it does drop your call volume. So if you're experiencing higher than expected call volumes, especially during really busy periods, the work request form can really absorb some of that um, excess phone calls. It can bring in leads when leads are thinking about booking with you so they don't have to remember to call you the next day. The way that it's set up with Jobber by default really doesn't give enough information to absorb phone call volume. So I want to go through that with you on how we can set this up and really make it work for you. So you can access your work request form under the settings. And then you're going to choose settings again. Request is under the client communication portion. And then to customize the form, you'll just click on the customize form button. This form is only available in connect and grow plans. So if you are on the core or the new light program, you won't have access to this form. It is 100% worth the upgrade, just it does allow you to collect leads better than you would have without. So we're gonna go to customize form, Normally in Jobber, there's a kind of pre, uh, prefab form that's in here. I just find it's a little too generic and it doesn't allow you to ask any questions in its current form. So I like to start from scratch, make a new form that really follows your products. It asks the important questions that you need asked and it will collect the information that you need. So the first part of the form, there is a short description of your services or follow-up details. It's really important to use this box to communicate how to use the form, give your customer an expectation of when they can expect to hear back from you. Sometimes customers don't feel comfortable filling out these forms because they think they're just gonna die in someone's inbox. And you just want your customer to know that you're checking these regularly. I usually say within 24 hours, they'll receive a response from you. Or the next business day, if you don't work on weekends, that's fine. Just say that it's the next business day that they should hear back from you. You, If you offer emergency services, you would want to put that in this box that you do want phone calls for emergency services. If somebody is in an emergency, you don't want them filling out this form just in case somebody doesn't get to it right away. Um, if somebody has worked with you before and they are in Jobber as a client, you really don't want them filling out this form directly from your website. You want them to do it in Client Hub and I'll go into that a little bit later. The second portion here is contact details. This isn't an editable portion of the form just because this is the information that goes into the client form in Jobber. So Jobber needs this form to stay the way that it is to push that information over properly. So you can't really do a whole lot here. You cannot make this mandatory to fill out. And really when it comes to this form, I don't recommend making anything mandatory leave everything as optional. It's more important to collect some information than lose that lead because they're frustrated with your form. So you have two options on what you can add to the form. You can add sections. Sections are good for if you have a seasonal business and in the spring, you'd like your spring services at the top and your winter services at the bottom. So you can move your sections up and down throughout the form. And that way people are seeing the information that's kind of pertinent to the time of the season that it is. You can also use sections to set up um, different parts of the form. So if you have property information, you could have a 
property information section, followed by a frequency section or a service type section. You could also have this form set up as one long section, which is completely fine. Just if you do the seasonal thing and you want to move it up and down, that's when it's best to use sections. So we'll call this section property type. So this could be for people whose service residential, commercial, industrial. These are the types of questions that you can ask on your work request form. I always recommend using check boxes where you can, as opposed to drop downs. Check boxes allow customers to see all of the options without clicking the drop down to see the options. It also allows for people to choose more than one thing. You don't want to limit your customer to what they can do in this form because they might get frustrated and leave, or they may not ask you for information on a product that you may have they may have wanted to order from you. So I always choose check boxes. And uh, let's say describe your property type. So we could do residential, commercial, and then add an option if you need one. You can always delete these. The one problem with checkboxes is you cannot move these up and down. That's the only thing I really get frustrated with making these. Again, if you need people to select one, you can toggle this to on. I do think you should leave it as off, personal preference. I just always want to see people fill it out the best that they can, hit submit without getting sent back due to errors. You can make this form as long as you want. I know it may seem like a lot, but it really does only take customers a minute or two to fill it out. And the more detailed the form is, they feel like they're really getting heard that you have kind of taken into consideration the information that they have to share at the time. And if this form here can replace an entire phone call, depending on the services you offer. You can just send them a quote right away from this. So if it's something that you already have a product or service that's pre-priced based on property size. So let's say we're doing like a fertilizer application. You could have your first question is what type of property? The next question could be, what size is your property? And you can give them a few options here. You could say like small, medium, large. Obviously you're gonna wanna give some kind of sizing reference in here. So you could say this is under an eighth of an acre, eighth to half an acre, and so on. Then you can ask them what type of service they're looking for. We could do mowing fertilizer. You can keep adding as many options as you want. If you don't need an option, you can hit delete. Um, short answer would be things, say for a cleaning company, uh, or you could ask, do you have pets? They could leave a little answer there. For long answer, these would be questions like, do you have any additional information to share? So this is great if you have services that are pretty broad, like let's say in this case, if this is for a landscaping company and you do hardscapes or softscapes and you want people to kind of share their vision with you, 
you can put that information here. They can make the answer as long as they like. The short answer questions would be, you know, if you're a cleaning company, you could say, how many bedrooms do you have? How many living rooms do you have? They could say one or two or, you know, five bedrooms, or three bathrooms, something where they can just type it in quickly. They don't have to look through a list. They don't have to check a box. They're just hitting one number. So this is how to fill out the different types of questions. You could ask people here if they have photos to share. Please send to info at my email .com. So once the section is completed, you don't really need to do anything. I mean, you can move these questions up and down if you've got a question that you added later on that you think should be up at the top. You can always rearrange these by the season as well. Or if you find that maybe at, if you had a question at the end of the form that's not getting answered as frequently as you'd like, you can move that up and down here. Just really tweak this form. This should be kind of a living document. It should change often, maybe not often, but just to kind of accommodate how your clients are using it or how your leads are using it. You can change the questions if you find that people are really confused about what you're asking for. We can make an online booking section. So this does not automatically book people into Jobber. And for me personally, I don't really enjoy giving customers the option to book their own service. If you have a very small service area, that's fine. However, if you have people booking their own service, that time slot that they take may add to extra driving for your technicians, could really throw a wrench in your schedule. Maybe, you know, from point A to point B plus the appointment time, it needs more time than that time slot gives. So honestly, I really recommend taking this out, but to each their own. Some people do use these. You can change the wording. You can say schedule an assessment. So people can tell you which day works best for them to have an assessment. I mean, if you have a big company or, you know, a lot of people that can handle these requests as they're coming in, this might be an option for you. You can change this question here. If you don't want to do evening assessments, you can take that out and just have any time, morning or afternoon. Or if, you know, you just want, would you like any time or afternoon? I mean, this doesn't really make sense. But if you delete an option, you can always add it back in. So from this portion here, you can update the form. When you update, it is live right away. So you wanna make sure that anything that's on here is something it's okay for the client to see right away. You can test these out. You can change one question. You can change the whole form as often as you like, and it just goes live right away. You can click preview form to see how it's going to look to your customer. It looks a lot longer in the screen editing screen. So it is a good idea to look at it here to see how it actually appears to the customer. Another good practice is keeping your options and your questions really short, just because if somebody's looking for information on their phone, obviously on a computer, you have a lot more room for the text here. On a phone, it'll look like a giant paragraph for each answer, which can be really overwhelming to customers. You wanna keep it as short as possible. Now to use this, this request form will automatically be available in Client Hub, and that's where you want people to fill that out. You can also embed it on your website if you have the grow plan. So you click view embed options, you can change the button color to match your brand. So you can use hex codes from your brand. You can choose some pre-selected colors here that Jobber has for you. 
or you can change the text color within the button as well. So this is the embed code here. You copy the code and you can email that to your web developer. Or if you can access your own website, you can add this as kind of a standalone page on your website, or you can have it as a portion in your website using short code. You can also have it as a pop-up. Um, this is the code for a pop-up form. So something that stands out from your web page when people click on the book online button. So whichever code you decide to use, this is just toggle back and forth between these two tabs. So we're gonna hit cancel. I will do a, another video on how to embed the form on your website and how that will look. We can also share the link. So this is good for Facebook pages, or if you don't have the grow plan and you can't embed it on your site, you could have a lot of buttons throughout your site that allow people to click and request. But again, you do want that differentiation between this link and Client Hub. So I will do a video about MailChimp marketing as well, if you have the MailChimp integration and how to use that to drive people into Client Hub or to use the request form. Obviously, if you have that person's email, you don't want them filling out this version of the form. We're gonna go to Client Hub, which is just above the requests. And we'll click on there. You, If you've never watched the video, obviously watch it. It's got Molly from Jobber kind of explaining how Client Hub works. This will pop up every time. So after you've watched it once, you can close it. You can change settings here. So this is how Client Hub appears to your customers. Menu visibility, you want that obviously. I'm not gonna go through this whole thing, but requests are, uh, sorry, that's on a different page. Uh, so under the client hub, you would want to make a button on your page that tells people that they can log in, the information that they can see on this page. Client hub is also a great way to introduce um, people to client hub. Is, it's easiest to do that through MailChimp, email people, tell people about client hub. You really want them to use it. So you can copy this URL and you can attach it onto anything that your client might use. You could use this for QR codes if you wanted it on service stickers. I'll go into that in another video as well. But the Client Hub is for people that are in your system as a client. They could be leads, they could be actual clients. Anyone that has been entered into Jobber is considered a client and will have access to this. So I'll do another video on Client Hub, how to use it, and we'll go from there. If anyone has any questions, definitely feel free to send me a message or leave a comment and I'll try and get to you as soon as I can. Thanks, we'll see you in the next video.